Barry, how you doing? Okay, how are you? Uh, another day in paradise. You got a moment? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is 10 o'clock a.m. Councilor Donald, you may start your meeting. Thank you so much. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Great, Thank great. You. Good morning and welcome to the City of Bessemer City Council meeting. Uh, 1700 Third Avenue North here in the great city of Bessemer. Today is Tuesday, October the 19th, 2021. The meeting has been called to order. Uh, counselors, we will say a solid word of prayer. We'll offer that to the Lord. And as we go to God in prayer, please, as I always ask, let us pray for this nation. Let us pray for this country. Let us pray for this county, this state, this city, especially for this city, the city of Bessemer, that we will do what is necessary decently and in order. Let us pray for the bereaved families here in this city. Let us go to God and pray. In the name of the one who does all things well. Item number two, Ms. Taylor. Council roll call. Councilor Alexander. Councilor Alexander. Councilor Carrier. Present. Councilor Crusoe. Present. Councilor Marshall. Present. Councilor Thickpan. Councilor Thickpan. Councilor Matthews. Present. Councilor Donald. Present. We have five present, two absent. We have a quorum. Ms. Taylor. Madam I Chair, that. I'm here. Oh. Okay. Councilor Alexander, we have six present, one absent. We have a quorum. Thank you so much. Item number three, please. Approval of minutes from October 5th, 2021. Councilor, you have your minutes. Are there any corrections and or concerns? Now I need a motion, a second, and a roll call, please. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I move to adopt the minutes as presented. Second. Been properly moved and second that we adopt the minutes um, from October the 5th, 2021. No discussion. Roll call, please. Councilor Alexander. Aye. Councilor Collier. Aye. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Matthews. Aye. Councilor Donald. Aye. Six ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item number four, please. Committee reports. Councilors, are there any committee reports? Item number five. Presentations, awards, announcements, and recognitions. Councilors, do you have any of the 
people named. If not, um, the coach of the Little League, Seven U, is here to um, speak with the council for just a moment. Uh, Ms. Ms. Coleman, can you see, is he in the council chambers? Yes, ma'am, hold on one second, please. He's not in there. Okay, when he comes, I'll, I'll give him the privilege of speaking. But counselors, uh, for an announcement, as you know, we have, we've lost uh, a number of citizens here in the city of Bessemer per our census. It is time now for us to redraw districting lines to see whether or not and where did we lose those, uh, those persons and or citizens. I would ask, um, I have already called to get the, the numbers for the city of Bessemer. Mayor Gully, are you on the line? Good morning, this is Terrain. Mayor Gully, uh, he'll be joining in a moment. Good morning, Terrain. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Good. Let me ask you a question. Do we have the numbers uh, from the Census Bureau? I believe we do have those numbers. Um, they should be available online. And I do. I think I've shared them with a couple of people. I think our population was right around 26,000 somewhere. Approximately within that number, but 26. Uh, zero one nine. I think that's what the last I heard. But we do have the numbers to answer your question. Um, will you please share those numbers with each of the council members so that they won't have to go over um, or call? Will you please share those numbers for each of them? And counselors, uh, I will call a special meeting so we can attend to this business. Whether or not uh, I'm in the seat or whomever the president is, we can get this business taken care of. Madam President, uh, this is Shan. Uh, yes, Shan. As it relates to that item, um, we are gonna make the engineering department and uh, Mr. Singleton are supposed to review that data Thursday morning to see exactly where we are. So uh, we'll give you a report as soon as we know what's going on with that. That's Thursday morning? Yes, ma'am. As part of our, we meet weekly eight to nine thirty to go over a number of items, and we just put that item on the agenda and ask Mr. Singleton to be present. Hey, hey, Shan, this is Daniel. That's actually going to be next Thursday morning. Oh, it's um, going to be next Thursday. Okay. Yes, just wanted to clear the twenty eighth. The twenty eighth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Is, there, is there a time? Well, we, we meet 8 to 9.30. Daniel, did we set that one at 9.30 or did we just ask them to be there at 8? They're going to they're gonna be there at 8. We're going to go with them first. Okay. You said 8 to 9.30 on the 28th? Yes, ma'am. And that's not all about just that. There's like a 15-page agenda we go through every Thursday, but that is one of the items on that agenda. And as Daniel said, we're going to do that item first. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Counselors, are there any questions? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. And and I guess my question, um, when you say you all gonna meet, that that's to look at it on a, from a mapping standpoint, or I, I'm just, just yes. curious. The the first thing we have to do is the you know the constitutional requirement is that all districts must be within five percent of the other districts number wise. And so the initial sit down will best be determined 
one are the council districts still within that five percent mandate if not which districts are outside of that mandate and then we can report back to the council you know where where we're out or if we're within the tolerance level okay i got you okay yeah, yeah. all right i just was wondering the the, the substance yeah okay right that's, it's that's just it. an, an initial look at the numbers you know we've been asking for them and trying to get them from the state and they finally i think slowly filtered down to us or will or at least we hope they have and so that that will be the first meeting to just to determine that and then we can make a report back to you where the tolerances are right because there's a there's a lot of variables death uh residency change and it's a lot of variables in there so uh, yeah okay thank you sir yes sir. thank you so much um as mayor Go um terrain are there any any presentations award announcements or recognition that Mayor Gully has. Madam President, good morning to you and the entire council and all who are listening. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, I have none at this time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Gully. Item number. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the uh, the coach has arrived. Has okay. arrived. In the, in, in will the you time. ask him? Will you ask him if he would step to the? the podium, please. Sure, absolutely. Sir, would you come to the podium? Councilor Donald. Yes, ma'am. May I announce the arrival of Councilor Thickpen? I, I think I see her. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Councilor Thickpen. Hold on. She's there. Yes, ma'am. I am. My oh. Oh. internet connection is not great today. I may have to switch to my phone. Okay. Uh, Councilor Thickpen arrived at the city council meeting at 10.09 a.m. Thank you so much. Coach, are you there? Hello? He's not able to hear, Madam Chair. Someone's trying to Get him straight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Ms. Hall, are you on the line? Coach, is that you I see? Ms. Hall, are you on the line? Good morning, Good morning. everyone. Yes, ma'am, I am. Good morning, Ms. Hall. Until uh, they get Coach taken care of right there, let's go ahead to item number six, Ms. Taylor. Okay, item six is July 20th, 2021. We do some status report. This is a hearing. And this was a hearing. Uh-uh, Ms. Coleman. Ms. Coleman is, is looking to see whether or not there is a citizen here or received paperwork for we nuisance. Ma Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mr. Sullivan indicates that, that the uh, coach is ready. She is ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. On uh, on number six, no one is here for the weed nuisance. <laughs> number seven, Miss Taylor. Okay. Um, is there going to be a vote on number six? Um, yes. I was looking. Yes, ma'am. I need a motion, a second, and a roll call, please. Is there a recommendation by Ms. Hall? Ms. Hall, do you have a recommendation? Yes, ma'am. On the status report that was presented, um, the properties that are being cut by owner, I would like to request that those be abated. 
the properties that are deemed no action and or incomplete, I would like to request that those be voted on to be put. Okay, we got that this morning. Madam President. Yes, ma'am. I move that all items incomplete or no action be cut and all items cut by owner be abated. Second. Is it properly moved that so named will be cut and or abated? Roll call, Ms. Taylor. Councilor Alexander. Aye. Councilor Collier. Aye. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Thickpan. Aye. Councilor Matthews. Aye. Councilor Donald. Aye. Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Item number seven, please. September 7, 2021, we nuisance status report. This is a hearing. Is there anyone there, Ms. Coleman? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> Ms. Hall, your recommendation. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. On item number 30, I'm sorry, on item number 18, 3308 Berkeley Avenue, Mr. Williams is, is requesting a 30-day extension on that property. Also, the properties that are deemed cut by owner, I'd like to request that those be abated. The properties that are deemed no action and or incomplete, I'd like to request that those be voted on to be cut. 3308 Berkeley. Is it a 30 day? Yes, ma'am. 30 day extension. That's fine with me. Madam, Madam Chair. President. Yes, sir. I move that the items that are listed cut by owner be abated. Those that are no action and complete be cut and that item 18 be given a 30 day extension. Second. And then property moved and second that so named mm -hmm. items will be cut and or abated and 3308 will be given a 30 day extension. Roll call, Ms. Taylor. Councilor Alexander. Aye. Councilor Collier. Aye. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Thickpan. Aye. Councilor Matthews. Aye. Councilor Donald. Aye. Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. We'll go ahead to eight while we got Ms. Hall on the line. Item number eight, please. October 19, 2021, Weed Nuisance Report, set hearing date. Oh. On this particular item, with the council approval, I'd like to request a hearing date be set for the first Tuesday in December, which is December 7th at 10 a.m. December 7th at 10 a.m. Councilors? Madam President? Yes, ma'am. Uh the hearing date be set for December the 2nd at 10 a.m. Second. second. Has been properly moved and second that we will move this hearing to December the 7th at 10 a.m. 2021. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Alexander. Aye. Councilor Collier. Aye. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Thickpen? Aye. Councilor Matthews? Aye. Councilor Donald? Aye. Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Thank you. Are you, are you still there? Coach, Can someone Coach. unmute? Coach is still here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm all right. Good, good. Give us your name, give us uh, your address, and tell us what you're here for, Coach. 
All right, my name is uh, Deontay Colvin. My address is uh, 52. You say give you give my address? Yes, sir. Uh, my address is 5201 Taylor Lane, Gusman, Alabama. And I'm here uh, on behalf of Gusman Tigers Youth Football Team. And we're here uh, to, I guess, uh, state what we do as a football program and also get on the uh, board agenda to receive funds. We had a meeting last year where we kind of did the same thing and we kind of running back into the same time frame of uh, the travel and having travel expenses for the youth football players. So, uh, Coach, as I told you when you all uh, came to us, on, on, on next year, um, we would hope that um, maybe about May that uh, you all will sit down with the director of the Recreation Center, Mr. Wood, Mr. Woodard, and, um, or, and, or the council and mayor, and let us uh, talk about um, placing you all in the budget if possible. Now, I know on last year, what we did was um, the bus was rented uh, for you all, and those funds uh, came from Representative Louise Alexander, which was $5,300. Uh, I did receive uh, your paperwork this morning. I will get it to each council member. I did attend the, um, the homecoming and I thoroughly enjoyed myself with those little, little ones out there. And I can say, we uh, should be proud of these little boys. Um, Bessemer did win every game on Saturday. Is that not true? Um, yes, that, yes, that's true. We did win okay. all five games that we played, and uh, uh, we, we, you know, we have a lot of teams that's been doing a lot of winning, and a lot of people uh, when we talk about the winning that we do, and even when we come down to the meeting, meeting like this, and start asking for funds and things like that, a lot of people are not uh, sports fans or football fans, so they get it. Uh, you know, to get sidetracked on football, but we try to run a good football program. And, it's, and, it, and it, you know, we have other uh, sands and things that it get to be bigger than just a, the game of football because a lot of coaches, we put a lot of hard work and time outside of just the game. You know, uh, the relationships we have with the players, with the parents, uh, molding those players to try to be better, better people as they uh, go through the program. So we, you know, for years, the team have been doing a lot of winning. But it always become bigger than that when we can see those players uh, progressing to to become where a lot of us are productive citizens. So, so yeah. But winning, we we've been on track for winning. So, well, I'm glad. Even if they lose, we're still proud of them um, as a team. And you're here today for seven U asking what can the council do to get seven U to is it Miami, Florida? Uh, yes, it's closer to Miami, but it's a little shorter than that. Bradenton, Miami is in that area. So it's like a 12 hour drive. Uh, and we're looking to try to, uh, you know, we're basically coming back asking for the same type of uh, coverage we had last year, whether it's for travel expenses, expenses whether it's for activities, uh, whether it's for uh, food, just whatever we can kind of get on the agenda and try to get. Uh, specifically, we've asked for the seven U team because we we uh, we came last year on behalf of the, of the six U. We were six last year, now we're seven. Uh, we were the only team to win and go last year at six year olds. But this year, we have uh, the team that I coached, the seven year olds, that will be looking to go. And then we have like two or three other teams that'll be also going looking to go. I think we have like ten U, nine U, and possibly like our six U. So we have some other teams that are looking to go. And in the past, we have had uh at least two or three teams go um so this year we were kind of in that same hunt of trying to get two to three teams to go uh i know you mentioned like trying to sit down uh with the rec or with the mayor and kind of get on the same page and talk about uh talk about this ahead of time uh it's kind of hard to do um because uh typically you play your season and you don't know if you're going to be a good team or a bad team so you don't know if you're going to uh earn the right to get to those to that point because uh, those games are national invite games. It's invite only. They're only looking for the teams that, you know, 
deserve to go, a win out to go, or show that they're the best to go. So I think that's kind of why we always kind of get in this limbo or kind of waiting until late October, November to kind of ask. And it always been, you know, it's always kind of tug of war. Can we get it or not get it? And we ask late because we, as a team, don't know that we're going until we earn the right to go. Uh, but, yes, uh, we only had one team to go last year. So this year we may be looking at two or three teams going in addition to the 7U team. Well, let me ask a question. With that bus, I see that this bus will hold um, up to, what is it, 65 players and coaches. Would that be two teams? Uh, typically, if you get like a 55 passenger bus, uh, teams have about three. Most teams have like 30 players somewhere in there, but you probably won't take the like 25, 30. So like two buses uh, could carry like two to three teams. So two buses. They're like 55 passengers, so you get 55 passengers. You could put, you know, that should be enough to cover the 65 players that's going. Uh, if you have, okay. if you have up to three teams, okay. so you wouldn't have Council. to do per bus per team. So, okay, and I did get the opportunity to see each and every one of them on Saturday. I, I did. I, I truly, I can tell you, um, you all are taking your time out to work with these boys and. Um, the parents are taking their time out to bring them out to you. I just commend you, Coach. Um, I, I truly do. Uh, what you do, it takes a special person to do what you do. Any council member? Um, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, you too, Coach Coleman, and um, all of the staff down at the REC who is responsible for the su success of our little league um, teams. It's been, I, I also had an opportunity to um, attend the homecoming festivities on Saturday and it gave my heart great joy to see the positivity that's taking place in, um, with, the, um, with the program. First, um, it's occupying the idle minds of our youth, you know, the uh, citizen involvement circumventing crime, you know, as far as giving the kids something else to do other than um, the negativity and all of uh, plenty of other things that they could be involved in just to see, not only just the boys, even the, um, the, the girls as cheerleaders. And um, I mean, we didn't just, I didn't just witness mothers um, down with their kids. I mean, it, there were um, a park filled, filled with fathers as well. And it, it was it was it was such a beauty um, to to witness this on Saturday, and I, I too agree that we need to uh, work towards making this a line item on our agenda. You know, um, to help be in a position whereby we don't have to uh, come back looking so uh, closely or so deep as far as in uh, Ella. I mean, I guess um, identifying or locating um, the funds to help um, facilitate these teams um, with the positivity that, um, that, you know, that they're conveying in, in, in the city. Um, it, it's a beautiful thing. Again, thank you all. And I look forward to um, your, our teams coming on home with some more national um, trophies again. Thanks again, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Councilor Crusoe. Uh, Coach Coleman, we'll get with um, the mayor and legal and see what is it after I distribute what you all have sent me, see what is it that we can do to help uh, send these boys to bring us home some more championships. We hope that we'll get an opportunity to see them again on Friday in the parade because one asked me, um, Grandma Cynthia, are you gonna be cooking at the parade? I didn't know I was his grandma, but I said, no, sir. I surely will not, but um, I look forward to seeing them interacting with them. Any other counselor? Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Um, yes, Counselor Alexander and then Counselor Matthews. I just want to take the time out to thank the coach um, and also the the parents, the, the team moms uh, for what they do and the effort that they put in. Uh, with the kids as well as the fathers. I have got a chance to go to uh, a practice game and you would have thought it was a game. 
<laughs> it was so many people out there. Like you said, Council Crusoe, the fathers, the mothers, and the whole community was out there. So I thank you all for what you're doing um, for these young men and women. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm just going to echo some of this, some of the same in, uh, sentiments about uh, first congratulations. And, and um, I, I do understand that because I've been there and then now as a grandfather, I find myself going on Saturday morning to witness my little uh, four-year-old grand uh, uh, in his sports, in his sports. So it's, 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 uh, it's uh, a joy to see them uh, cry and, and do whatever else they do as little kids. Uh, but anyway, I think uh, someone mentioned, uh, uh, I guess the, the public purpose part of it uh, in their statements and also the proactiveness of it. And I understand that you can't predict who's going to go, but if there is going to be a public purpose involved in this and we, the council, uh, can do uh, a line item for this for just in case it happens, you, you may come with a figure that's uh, comfortable to historical and what we've done in the past and have something set aside. And then if they don't go, I mean, we do want them to go. We encourage them to uh, win. If they don't, then that money is still there. But just in case they do, then we won't have to uh, come back and, you know, find monies. Uh, I think being proactive means a lot. Uh, especially when you don't know, but you can anticipate. So uh, congratulations again, and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you all. Thank you, Coach, That's for good. coming. I know you got to get back to work. As I stated, we'll get with legal, and we'll talk with the council and the mayor and see just what this body can do to help those teams get to uh, Miami. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Thank you. Item number nine, please. Item nine is an honorary street change. Name of honoree is Reverend Roger Bowles. Change from 2501 Clarendon Terrence. Change to Reverend Roger Bowles Terrence. Don't know who called that in or who placed that on there. Mayor Gully, uh, this is my, my first time hearing them when I saw it. Mayor Gully, did you place that on? Madam President, uh, uh, I uh, I did not, um, but I, you know I am aware of something that there is a process and application that has to be filled out regarding uh, the naming of that street. But um, uh, that is not an item that uh, that the mayor placed on there. See that it uh, came from a Miss Marvis Norfleet, and she has paid the hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, is Miss Norfleet in the council chambers? No, ma'am, she's not. Thank you so much, Madam. Madam, Madam President, I'm not. Uh, you know, I've, I'm not seeing any paperwork regarding and so that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I will uh, uh, check with uh, check with my staff and see and so if anybody reached out and so to them and told someone the uh, the process. But I no, I have not. Uh, to this point, I've not had any discussion with anyone over there. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mayor uh, Gurley. Councilor Donald. Council yes, ma'am. I can tell you, um, Ms. Norfleet came to my office and asked for an application. So in the process of her asking for the application, we gave it to her and she filled it out and paid the $150. So we, as soon as we got the application, she did, she paid the money. We just sent it to the council's office. So. Okay. In turn, we'll, um, um, Council Matthews, is there something you need to say? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. And uh, I think it would uh, serve the city best and the persons or organization that request uh, the, the, the honorary street uh, 
application because um, as we all know, we had the last one that I know we had was uh, 11th Avenue there at New Bethlehem Baptist Church. And I explained it to the uh, deacon and trustees ministry at that time that we did not and do not change the name of the street. We do it in honor of. And I think you it would it would serve the the persons who making these applications to, to know up front that that's what that's how we do it. And uh, because you know I think at a minimum when we tell people how the, what the process is and the, the, the length that we go to do it, I think they'll understand it better because if you notice on here, it, it said change the street name too, uh, but we just do it in honor of. So, uh, and uh, Attorney Payton, are you uh, on the line there? To yes, yes, sir. Um, uh, it, it, it probably would be a good idea as you say when the application is given right to the individual to give them a copy of the ordinance and that you know that would show them it's only i think two or three pages and explain the process and so you know right now she has complied with the with, with the ordinance and the next step would be for the sign committee to meet and look at it and then the mayor to look at it also because the ordinance calls for a recommendation from the sign committee and the mayor. Right, right. And you know, at, at one time we had, uh, Madam Chair, we because I see on here they said that they wanted to be named Reverend Roderick Bowes Terrace, but you know, we have yeah. a we have a, a renamed the street. We do, and it's been consistent. And I think all council members can attest to this. It's been consistent that we just do in honor of. So uh, I think if we take care of this on the front end, then we it would be uh, probably easy on the applicant. Yes, it's just an honorary sign that's placed yeah. there on that road. It's, you're free. right. The street is not the street name is not changed. An honorary yeah. sign is placed. Yes. Yeah. I thank do you, totally man. agree with you, Councilor Matthews, and thank you. Attorney Payton, but as I stated, this is the council or first time hearing of it. Had uh, someone contacted uh, the counselor, uh, she could have told them that uh, we only do in honor of. We don't actually change the street name. That's why I asked Mayor Gully, did he know anything? And he stated he didn't. We will delete this item until Mayor Gully um, has um, given us a recommendation on this item and we will place it back on after it has gone through the, uh, the channels that it needs to go through. Madam Madam Chair, yes, yes Madam sir. I, I thought it was gonna go to the committee and then the committee would, con Chair would contact that person and let them know. Well, Mayor Gurley said he's not, he's not even seen it. Um, but I, I, understand, I understand that, uh, Madam Chair, but it, there is a committee that I understand what you're saying. He had not seen it, but the application mm -hmm. and the fee amount has been been paid. But I I was under the impression that it would go to that committee and, it's, and that chair would contact the applicants and let them know just what it entails. Yes, sir. We can we can do it like that. Uh Councilor Matthews, um, Ms. Yeah. Coleman, this will go to uh, the, the committee. Uh, the committee will contact Ms. Norfleet and Ms. Taylor, you can forward a copy to the mayor. That committee chair is Councilor Carr, am I correct? Yeah. Yes, yes sir, Councilor Carr, yes it is. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor Collier. Ms. Ms. Coleman will forward you a copy. You in turn will forward it and get a meeting with your committee. Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Taylor in turn will forward a copy to Mayor Gully's office. Thank you all. Item number 10, please. 
A resolution authorizes acceptance of conveyance deed from the Industrial Development Board of the City of Bessemer for a public street, avenue, or thoroughfare to be named Win Way. Counselors, we discussed this. This is that property up by Happy Hollow. Is there any questions and or concerns? If not, I need a motion and a second, please. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I move the resolution. Need a second. Second. Has been properly moved that we we'll accept the conveyance deed from the Industrial Development Board of the City of Bessemer for a public street, avenue, or fairway to be named Wind Way. Any discussion? If not, roll call, Ms. Taylor. Councilor Alexander. I, Madam Chair, I call for discussion. How did we? How did they come up with the name Wind Way? I just want just to know. Um, Madam President, uh, Councilor Alexander, that was the name that was requested by uh, Ms. Varner, who was requesting this. Okay, thank you. Roll call, Ms. Taylor. Councilor Alexander. Aye. Councilor Collier. Aye. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Thickpan. Aye. Councilor Matthews. Aye. Councilor Donald. Aye. Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Thank you. Item number 11, please. Resolution authorizing mayor to execute quick claim D to UAB health system for lot F, survey of Bessemer Medical Center, second sector, Map Book 17, page 92, Bessemer Division of the Probate Office of Jefferson County. Counselors, this is that parking lot that's down on the UAB Medical Center West lot. If you look at your maps that I sent you, you'll see exactly what property is marked as F. It is not the property on Memorial Drive side, nor is it the property next to the old Huddle House. I call it the Umbla Shop, but it's the old Huddle. Uh, it's the property where you turn, if you look at the first page that say cap, um, Ms. Angela sent it to you. And this came from mapping that did an overhead and gave us this, this map. If you see, it was marked out for us where the lot is. If you look at the helipad right there, that's over the parking deck of the emergency department, you'll see that the lot is not on Memorial Drive. It is on uh, the golf course drive or medical center drive, whichever one that is. I am still not convinced, counselor, that we know and that this property is even labeled correct. After all of my, after the days that I've taken to go back and forward and to look, and if you want to see these maps, I also have the large map that was given to me by mapping of Jefferson County. I went to the probate office again to ask the young lady about this deed that we were given. He told me initially, very ugly, initially, this property is in Bessemer Caraway's name. I took that and I went on. I asked for a copy of the deed that said 
customer care away. Um, she would not give me a copy. I asked her, could I pay for a copy? Uh, seeing that it is um, public knowledge, he did not uh, want to even allow me to pay for a copy. I said, thank you. And I went up to the tax collector's office. I asked the young lady, I asked, I told her that I needed some help. And she said, yes, ma'am, what do you need help with? And I'm explaining it slowly so that you all can hear me. She said, um, and who are you? I gave her my card and she said, well, it's good meeting you. It's good putting a name to a face. I said, yes, ma'am, it's good meeting you as well. I said, but I need some help. I asked her these questions. I said, now this property has never been recorded in Bessemer Caraway and or UAB Medical Center West. She said, no, ma'am, it has never been recorded in either of those names. And what I have here now states Bessemer City. She said, up until 2012, until 2012, this property was named City of Bessemer's Hospital Parking Lot. She said, after 2012, this city, this parking lot became the city of Bessemer. So I asked this question. I said, well, let me ask you another question. I know that we don't pay taxes, that we are exempt. I said, who has been sending any and all paperwork in on this property? She said, the city of Bessemer had to have because everything that we have is in the city of Bessemer's name. I said, okay, even we know that the city of Bessemer has been paying the $15 storm water for 43 years. She said, yes, ma'am. I in turn went over to the tax assessor's office. Again, I pulled paperwork on this property. As I stated, the property has never been recorded. I have a deed in my hand. Every property in and around that hospital, a recorded deed every property in and around that hospital. I just don't have one or one that was given to us as a deed. It was stated that it was paid, that $63,000 was paid for that parking lot to the city of Bessemer. Now I'm gonna turn it over to attorney Payton so that he can give us some clarity as he have it on lot F, put into the survey, Bessemer Medical Center, second sector, as recorded in map book 17, page 92. It's recorded the city of Bessemer. So I would ask this body to get a second opinion so that we can get some clarity as to which of these lots are we actually talking about quick claiming over to Bessemer Care, I'm not Bessemer Care, I'm sorry, UAB Medical Center West. One, we did not deal with uh, UAB Medical Center West, we dealt with Bessemer Careway, on which that board has been dissolved. Um, I would, Turn it over to Attorney Payton. Maybe he can give us, maybe he got some clarity that I didn't get or the paperwork that they gave me because I gave you, I gave you the maps as to how and what lot is deemed lot F. And it's not either of the lots that we thought it was. Not the one over by the cafeteria, not the one over off Memorial Drive, not the one by the by the omelet shop. 
It is the one where you turn in and go down, I guess this is Gulf Porch Road with the, um, I don't know whether you all can see it, but you all have your, your paperwork um, and go down there with the guard shack. Attorney Payton, can you shed any light on which of these lots are we actually talking about? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Barely, but I can hear you. All right. So you are correct that lot F is the lot with the uh, shed on it and the cross gate. So it is not on Memorial Drive. It is on Medical Center Drive. That is the lot that we are talking about. So I was incorrect when I told the council that it was on Memorial Drive. Now, if you will look at the next to last page in the documents that are in your package, and I've also asked Lindsay Whitworth, who's the counsel, the legal counsel for University of Alabama to be on this call also to listen to this. So I'm gonna go over this and then Lindsay, I, I'm gonna walk through this and then if, if you don't mind, if I'm incorrect in anything, if you'll uh, update or take any questions that the council has. But if you will, if the council will look on the next to last page of this item, um, and it's the front page that staples this proceedings of the city council of the city of Buster, Alabama, to the next to last page, you'll see real 353 page 108. Does everyone see that? That's correct. All right. So that is the deed, and that deed is recorded in the probate office. And the reason I know that is when it says real 353 page 108, that is the designation of the probate court of Jefferson County where that document is recorded. And if you look on the last page of that, you'll also see the, uh, the next page, 353, page 109, at the very foot of it, you'll see a stamp on the bottom that says State of Alabama. It's kind of blurry, but that is, and that's very, it's signed by O.H. Florence, judge of probate. So that is where the deed from the city of Bessemer, the Bessemer Caraway Medical Center was conveyed back in 1978 to uh, Bessemer Caraway for the sum of $63,000. The document before that, immediately before that, is real 353, page 106, and I'm sorry, 353, page 105, 106, and 107 is the ordinance of the city of Bessemer commissioners whereby they declared the property to be surplus and, and authorized the conveyance to Bessemer Carewood. And that was done immediately preceding, uh, immediately preceding the deed conveyance. And that also, that document is recorded in the probate office of uh, Jefferson County. So the property is recorded as a deed in the probate office to Bessemer Carraway. Now, what didn't happen apparently is that and Bessemer Carraway did not assess the property in their name for ad valorem tax purposes. And that's separate and apart for, from a deed. Um, as, as Councilor Donald said, the city of Bessemer is exempt from ad valorem taxes. The University of Alabama or Bessemer Caraway was exempt from ad valorem taxes. And, but at least since the stormwater fee was ordinance was passed, and I'm gonna say that was sometime after 2002, I believe, where that stormwater ordinance was passed. The city of Bessemer has been paying $15, the $15 stormwater fee assessment on that property. So from that, um, I'm going to turn this over to Lindsay to Whitworth to tell us, Lindsay, how is it that UAB took possession of the property from Bessemer Caraway and 
what instrument or instruments do you have that show the best one caraway transfer that UAB or the University of Alabama? Thank you, Shan, and good morning, everyone. Um, I agree with Shan's explanation. The deed that he described shows the conveyance of the property known as Lot F, which is on Medical Center Drive, um, kind of between, bounded by Ninth Avenue South and Clinic Lane. Um, to Bessemer Caraway. And because of the exemption from taxes, I think it was just inadvertent that the both the city of Bessemer and what is now UAB, which was used to be Bessemer, but through a series of um, organizational changes is now Medical West and part of UAB, that it was an added in, in, inadvertent failure to pay these stormwater fees because of the, you know, they just, I don't think we noticed um, this $15 payment that we should have been paying because of our large exemption from, from the payment of taxes. So the title company, and I think Shan, you shared the title commitment, is that correct? Yes, the title commitment is in the package. It's a title commitment written by First American and uh, the agency. I'm trying to remember who that was. Was that the title group or who was who did this one? Uh, yeah, I believe the title, yes, the title group. Yes. The title group. So the the title company is agrees with us that the property was properly conveyed from the city of Bessemer to Bessemer Caraway, but this payment of the taxes by the city of Bessemer which appears to have been, you know, the, the property should have been reassessed and it wasn't. And some, sometimes that slicks with the cracks as our process, as the city and county and everyone's processes aren't perfect. Um, so because the city has been making, been making payments, the title company would like to clear up that payment and say, okay, even though you've been paying it, this deed is what controls and this is what clear is what what it makes everything clearer. So a quick claim deed just says, you know, whatever interest we have in this property related to this inadvertent inadvertent payment of stormwater fees, we convey, even if you don't, that's not our, even if you don't have any rights related to it, which I would argue is the case. So, and the, the next question, uh, Lindsay, and I think the answer can be found on uh, page three of 17 of the title commitment that is in the counselor's package under item four. Uh, there's no deed from Bessemer Caraway Medical Center yeah. to UAB Medical West. And, and the reason is, as I understand it, if you look at- There were two sheets missing on payments on event rental. I found the right, some mute. Ed, Ed, okay. So on number four, what happens is that 4A, it says, it says we find, and this is the title company, the deed from the city of Bessemer to Bessemer Caraway Medical Center, Inc., filed in real volume 353, page 108 in 1978. We find articles of amendment to the article, amended articles of incorporation of Bessemer Caraway Medical Center, and then instrument number 2002-60-9464, naming the corporation as UAB Medical West. Did y'all see that? And then UAB Medical West was dissolved and uh, it was later formed and, as, and became an affiliate of the UAB Health System. So Bessemer Caraway became UAB Medical West and then was merged into and became a part of the University of Alabama Health System. That's why you don't see a deed from Bessemer Caraway to UAB because it is one and the same entity. Is that a fair statement, Lindsay? Yes, that is accurate. So with that, if y'all have any questions, we have to answer them. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Councilor Christian. Um, thank you, Attorney um, Whitworth um, and Attorney Payton for your, um, your explanations concerning this um, situation. I think um, the simplest way to clarify everything is, um, do, do we have any type of um, proof um, or evidence of payment um, given an institution uh, such as UAB 
and the and a municipality such as uh, the city of Bessemer, I'm sure we have some type uh, record keeping or bookkeeping to show proof of payment. Um, I mean, was it, was it through barter and trade? Was it a money order, a check? Yes, um, we, we we should have um, the, the proof whereby this uh, this property was purchased. I, mean, I see a lot of paperwork as far as in different explanations uh, concerning this deed, but do we have any form of proof of payment? Well, I, the, as far as I know, I don't, I don't know that we would be able to locate a $63,000 check from 43 years ago. I think the deed uh, speaks that the consideration is $63,000. Now, um, I, I, I would doubt that we're going to find it a check and we know a bank isn't going to have a check even if that bank is still in existence you know 43 years later so Lindsay, i'll let you speak to that but i, I don't think that that's going to be uh something that we're going to find well i mean but before um ms whitworth um uh, speaks the um as far as in not being able to show any form um of, of payment the, the, i mean the burden of proof still lies upon uab to prove to the city of Bessemer that this purchase um was actually um, done, isn't it? No. Am I not correct? No, and, and what I would say is because the the mayor of the city of Bessemer executed the deed and would have given that to the closing attorney to close. And the closing attorney would have given the $63,000 check to the city of Bessemer before that deed was recorded, as in any other real estate transaction. Mm -hmm. Chan, so that's, that's exactly that's right. That's what exactly happened? what I was going to pay. That deed would not have been released from escrow until the funds had been received. It's just how real estate transactions work generally. So the, um, yeah. I guess the ultimate answer to my question is that we don't have any proof of payment. Other than the deed and the uh, ordinance of the city of Bessemer, I think that is evidence. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank Madam you. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and that's what I was looking at uh, the uh, 5353 page 108 where it says uh, that's the next to the last page that we when we started this conversation in consideration $63,000 and then going down to the bottom where it said the 20th day of July is that 78 or 70? And Ed Porter uh, signed it at, nice. as mayor at that time, uh, and and I, in in uh, in the nineteen seventies, defense. I think if there's any uh, any consideration of property, we'll probably won't won't find. Uh, I guess a. Uh, some paperwork showing it other than what we have here. But my other question is, and that leads me to this question, from an Avalorum tax standpoint, all other properties in and around uh, Medical West, uh, are they trued up? Are they correct? And is this the only piece of property that's... Uh, in question here. Yes, sir. I have all other deeds in and around that property. Uh, that is the only property that is in question. And I think that's from, because, from. excuse me. Sorry, this is, and, I didn't mean to interrupt you. One I, moment, Ms. Whitlow, one moment. Go and, ahead, and, and, I, and, and, I, and I was just talking about from an ad valorem uh, standpoint. That's that's That was my question. Okay, Ms. Whitlow, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, I think that's because this deed was only related to lot F. So when the deed was recorded and usually the tax assessor looks in the, the, the deed records and then assesses a property related on conveyances recorded, that this property, it was this deed was just lot F. So it was just this lot that was not re-indexed for ad valorem purposes. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, I'm finished. That, that okay. answers Thank you. Any other counselor? Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I still think we should hold off till we get our own counsel or 
a second opinion, an outside opinion, um, and really sit down and look at this. Okay. Any other counselor? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. If we're finished with the discussion, I'd like to move the item. Second. It's been properly moved and second that we will we claim the deed by vote in UAB Medical Center, UAB Health Systems, UAB Medical Center, Bessemer Campus, Lot F. Any discussion? If no discussion. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. My, my discussion was, it, it, I'm, I'm still hung up on that abalorum. I, I just can't get past that. Why would, why wouldn't uh, abalorum be uh, assessed to the hospital? And I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, the statements made that both are exempt. And I see where the, the $63,000 were, but I, I'm just hung up on the, uh, on that Alvalorum tax, why wouldn't it, uh, why was it continuing to be paid by, I mean, why wasn't it paid by UAB? Why wasn't it in their name? I just can't get past that. And Man. the, and the, Sorry. and the, 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 uh, the urgency of not wanting to just, you know, get clear where all minds are clear on this and not have any type of uh, heartburn from it. Madam President, if Mr. Yes, Matthews is here. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I haven't weighed in. I was just thinking, um, you know, I can't hear you, Counselor Thigpen. You have muted yourself. Uh, yeah, it keeps going out. Okay. Maybe, ma'am, maybe I'm unmuted now for good. Um, uh, after we got out of our meeting the other day, I pulled up my tax maps through real estate, and I had no problem locating lot F, and it did say City of Bessemer. And it isn't unusual. I see it all the time where something is not reassessed in a name. The deed belongs to somebody. Uh, sometimes we have corporations that pay the taxes uh, that for multiple entities like mortgage companies. I mean, they don't, they don't know who it is. They just pay it. And, you know, you're talking $15. We're talking maybe $300 if it was in 2002 that this was paid, you know, from the, the city was paying this, the stormwater. It, it probably wasn't enough that anybody questioned it or wondered what it was just little little pieces of paper that come through. And uh, the city has, I wouldn't say hundreds, but they have you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80. I don't know how many pieces of paper that they have that they pay the taxes on. And a $15 payment would not have thrown up any red flags. There's probably so many that come through, especially just stormwater. I mean, you just pay them and, and keep going. Uh, it's something we probably need to look at and see why we paid it. Uh, but it wasn't a, a red flag that was thrown up by any by anyone for this amount, for the number of stormwater payments that they have to make through the city. And it wasn't something that, that UAB Health System uh, would have noticed either. I mean, they've these. There's so many parcels. How many parcels did you say that you found in that section around the hospital? I found several sections, and um, I pulled these to several sections yeah. of uh, well, there was the assessment. Yeah, I mean, there's so many parcels, and they probably didn't realize that one little parcel up there on the corner was not included in the payment. They paid their storm water on all the others. So I don't, I don't see that it's a huge issue. I mean, it's we have the deeds, and we have the proof. I don't, I don't even know the the title company. I would say they probably could, could move forward 
even though the, the city has paid it, I guess that's something that uh, they just want to clarify. But we don't own the property. We paid the stormwater. We probably paid it on a lot of parcels. But I see it all the time in real estate, other companies paying or other people paying taxes on properties that don't belong to them. And uh, we don't own it. I think we need to move on and get this taken care of so that they can get their financing for the new hospital so we can have a mental health facility down there. Madam Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ma ma Madam Chair. Uh, one moment, Councilor Crusoe, then Councilor Marshall. Yes, ma'am. Um, my concern is, well, let, me, let, me, let me get some, let me, well, first of all, make some, um, a statement to clarify. My hangup is not about at Valorum or um, the water um, uh, taxes or whatever cost it was that was paid by the city of Bessemer versus UAB. My concern is that we actually, um, th th it was an actual transaction um, whereby the city of Bessemer really uh, truly sold this property to UAB. That, that's my concern. I understand what you're saying concerning the deed. And as a realtor, I mean, I too you know, am licensed for, this, for the second time. It doesn't make you any more of an expert than I and nobody else on this council for uh, asking for more clarity it, um, to have a clear conscience on, on making this decision. I can't understand why we are always so rushed to um to uh, to to come um, to make a decision around the table due to somebody else's urgency doesn't make it the city of Bessemer's urgency. We need to take the time to make sure that we're doing right by the citizens of Bessemer with this property that they have entrusted us with. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilor Marshall. Madam Chair, the documents have been presented showing the conveyance and the filing of the deeds. And I'm not a real estate person, but I'm sure the filing, the execution of the deeds are not going to be made and filed and probate sign off on them unless the money has been paid. I, I move the item, Madam Chair. The item has been moved. It has been second. We are in a discussion stage. My, 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 my point take on this as I, as I said in the beginning, and then we'll move on to the voting. As I stated in the beginning, I would hope that this, that this body would uh, get a second opinion on this property. I'm not, as Councillor uh, Crusoe and Dick Penn, they're experts on this, I'm not. I would hope that um, we're not so rushed each and every time that it comes to someone else having to make their deadlines. But when it comes to this council, it's not a rush, rush uh, situation, but um, we'll move on to roll call, Ms. Taylor. Councilor Alexander. No. Councilor Collier. Uh. Councilor Crusoe. Nay. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Thickpan. Aye. Councilor Matthews. Nay. Councilor Donald. Nay. We have three ayes, four nays. The motion does not carry. We will get with legal on um, on this, and it will be placed back on the agenda for um, just one comment. We had three different opinions. We had Attorney Payton, we had Lindsay Whitworth, and we have the title company. I'm not sure why another opinion would be necessary, but I will go with the vote. Thank you, ma'am. Item number 12, please. A resolution authorizing publication of notice to solicit resumes from qualified citizens interested in serving on the City of Bessemer Downtown Redevelopment Board and the use of municipal funds for the advertising expense of said publication. Councilors, we spoke about this. Mr. Days Page, who was the president of the Downtown Redevelopment Board, he resigned. Um, 
and this body decided to um, put it out for for advertisement again. We have a resolution there. Is there any concerns and or questions about this resolution? If not, I need a motion, second, and a roll call, please. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I can move the item. I need a second, please. Second. Has been properly moved and second that we will um, place the downtown, the city of Bessemer's downtown redevelopment board and the use of municipal funds for advertisement um, and publication. Any discussion? If not, roll Madam call the table. Madam, yes. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, we need to fill in the uh, exp the uh, expiration date on the publication. Ms. Taylor, do you already have that filled in? Uh, we in the in the resolution it states two weeks of advertising. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so we will begin advertising on the twenty fifth, and it will end on November the fifth. Okay. The 5th and November the 5th. Thank you. You're welcome. Roll call, please. Councilor Alexander. Aye. Councilor Carrier. Aye. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Thickpan. Aye. Councilor Matthews. Aye. Councilor Donald. Aye. Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Thank you. Um, item number 13, please. Resolution authorizing payment to EEFS Company PC for July 2021 invoices. Councilors, I looked at this and I had to look twice because I know that there has been. Uh, <laughs> We had paid them for the month of July. These are different invoices, Count. Have an opportunity to look at them. Are there any questions and or concerns? If not, I need a motion in a second. Roll call, please. Counselors, if you see me keep moving, it appears that the sun is moving with me and I'm trying to get out of the sun. I need a motion, Madam second, and Madam the roll call, please. Yes, sir. I move the uh, invoice. Need a second? Second. Has been properly moved and second that we will pay um, EEFS invoices for the month of July and the amount of what you have in your packets. I think one is 60 and one is 1100 and some odd cents. Roll call, Ms. Taylor. Councilor Alexander. No. Councilor Collier. Oh. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall? Aye. Councilor Thickpan? Aye. Aye. Okay. Councilor Matthews? Aye. Councilor Donald? Aye. Six ayes, one nay. The motion carries. Thank you. Item number 14, please. Vote on council attorney. Councilors, we did go through the process of interviewing six attorneys um, for the position of city council's attorney here in the city of Bessemer. Um, after I open it up, I'll ask Miss, if there's no discussion, I'll ask Miss Taylor to call each of the council, uh, the attorney's name out and we'll vote as we did for the judge. 
for the municipal court. Now, counselors, do you have any concerns and or questions before we open it up? M Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I still have a concern that we didn't start this process correctly. And my concern is that uh, even when individuals sent in resumes, we should have had a meeting prior to even accepting resumes, um, spelling out what the dues and responsibilities would be for you know, the city council attorney. And that way we could have narrowed down the, the pool of people considerably. Um, I, I just don't think, and now we talked, we talked earlier about rushing for somebody else, but now we want to rush to get a council attorney. But, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that we try to hold up, you know, the entities in the city that really have a bearing on helping to move the city forward. But now all of a sudden, it's a rush to get the, the council attorney. So my comments. Um, Councilor Marshall, it is not a rush. If you can remember, I think it was you that asked the question. If we are not satisfied with any of the three, will we be putting it out again for to solicit more? And I think that the question, the answer was yes. So there's not a rush, rush. We're not rushed get a, an attorney. We are moving through the process, but we are not rushed. Today, you're not rushed. Get well, I, I, I still say that that um, the process was started wrong and uh, was not handled correctly. Well, thank you, Councilor Marshall. Any other counselor? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't think uh, Councilman Matthews fell off, but uh, before he comes back, so we voting on. Oh, the I'm sorry. Not, not, did I, okay, did I'm I, sorry, Councilman Carly, Councilor, Councilor Matthews finish. Go ahead, okay. Councilman Matthews. Yeah, I, I'm not counseling voting on a uh, 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 council attorney today. I think we need to uh, reconvene. The the council need to reconvene and uh, discuss this this matter uh, in depth. Uh, but I'm I'm just not. I'm not in favor of voting on it today. That's just I agree, I agree okay. with you, Councilor. So, Matthews. counselors, counselors, what I'm hearing, um, please give me a consensus <clears throat> that um, we're not comfortable today in voting on a council's attorney. Is that the consensus that I'm hearing? Yes, that that is my my concern. That's my. my, my, my we will in turn, I will call a special meeting um, with you all and we will discuss a council's attorney. Thank you, uh, counselors. Item number 15. So members comments, statements or motions. District one. Uh, yes, madam, madam chair. Uh, <clears throat> I'll keep forwarding everything to the mayor's office. District two. I'm just asking the mayor for more police precinct uh, presence in District 2. Also, uh, more cleanup uh, from the little crew and some cutting grass because we got a lot of overgrown grass and lots over there in District 2. District 4. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, yes, uh, police. Patrol would be helpful in our area. We've had a lot of complaints about people running stop signs, not just a rolling stop, but 45 miles an hour through stop signs on Dickey Springs at Lindsay Loop and uh, Springdale, some areas over there, some areas over off Hilltop, people running the red light at Hilltop and Morgan Road. Uh, people are saying that uh, cars are coming through after the light has been red for quite some time and they're taking their life in their hands trying to pull out there. Uh, multiple trucks. We have a, a lot of trucks on Morgan Road now uh, with Carvana 
with even Dollar General, and we're going to have even more when Lowe's opens. Uh, so just need more patrol on that road in particular, but some of the neighborhoods as well. I would appreciate it. And I'll continue to send everything else through terrain at, through the mayor's office. Thank you. District 5. Madam Chair, I'll continue sending um, to the mayor's office. Thank you. District 6. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I'd like to just give a, a little brief uh, synopsis of the uh, executive committee from the Alabama League of Municipalities. And first and foremost, I'd like to say that uh, we're thankful that both sides of the aisle and the uh, in Congress for the state of Alabama is considering a federal holiday, I mean a national holiday for uh, an American female by the name of Rosa Parks. That's a move by uh, our Congress members, uh, Roby and Sewell. So we are looking forward to that and I think to be somewhere like the date of December 1st. Don't hold me to that date, but that's the date that was thrown out. And also, uh, as you well see on the interstate between Academy Drive and going on toward through Bright, the Rebuild America, uh, Alabama Act sign, you're going to see some more of those blue signs in the very near future for the simplest fact that the governor has uh, requested that. And also redistricting, we talked about that early in the meeting and we had some conversation about that, about the 5% and it is to be done three months prior to the election. So uh, we have a little window in doing that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure legal is, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty much the reason why they put it on the agenda uh, for in two weeks uh, for them to talk about it. And also, I know we had some had some concerns in our council meeting about animal control. Well, that Bessemer is not the only city that has animal control and uh, other issues. I mean, even from police departments. Uh, and the lack of, uh, we had a meeting concerning that, that people not, not running to law enforcement as they once had been. So uh, those things were, were mentioned. And last thing I wanna say is about uh, equipment that's left overnight in the, in the uh, communities. Let us uh, have some type of patrol around that because in, kids, when they see big tractors and Earth Movers uh, had a citizen in the pipe shop on 13th place run a child off a piece of equipment. Um, and God knows I don't want anything else to happen nowhere, nowhere to no one's child, especially uh, when it can be uh, uh, some type of patrol be done uh, in and around things that's left uh, overnight for, for days. So, uh, I asked her, did she call the police? And she said she didn't. She was more concerned about running and the child ran away, you know, of course. Uh, but you know, down on that McNeil area has a sore spot when it comes down to uh, children. So uh, uh, let's, uh, whether it's the mayor's office, can you just uh, make sure that at some point in time that we have, uh, and this was in the daytime too, so. That's why she felt comfortable. But I told her, I said, look, you can't say anything to children like you could when we were growing up uh, because they'll tell you something, uh, uh, try to do something. So I told them just, just resort to calling the, the police and uh, reporting whatever you, you see going on, especially in a, in a case like that. So uh, hopefully we won't have any more uh, children trying to get up on uh, earth movers uh, in the city. So uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, all I have. 
District 7. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, over in um, District 7, we have issues down all um, through Owen Avenue, um, Bryant Street, Lois Avenue with overgrown lots, um, a lot of garbage and trash um, align the roads um, throughout the district. So we're asking um, for more uh, cleanup. I'm, I'm hearing that we are um, short staff, but uh, nevertheless, with, with whatever um, crew that we have, we can use some um, attention over in, uh, in in District 7. Also, police presence. Um, we've been having a lot of um, gunfire um, since the last meeting. I mean, it's, it's not new to District 7 nor to District 3, um, but you know, we need um, to do what we have to do to get the, the city of Best Run in a place of uh, of safety um, it, it by, by some type of measures. Um, I, I mean, I don't have the answers. I'm not you know, sitting in professing to have the answers, but whatever measures that need to be taken in order to um, you know, decrease the comfort of um, the, you know, people just walking out of their houses and letting go. I, mean, it, um, I think it was uh, Saturday morning or, or Sunday morning, about four o'clock in the morning, cannons. We were awakened by cannons. So I ask that we, you know, as a council, um, sit down with the mayor, put our heads together to do whatever is necessary at whatever cost to make the, uh, the city of Bessemer, which is home to, to some of us for real, to, to make it safe. Also on 22nd street, yeah, we um I witnessed um another accident. Um, I, I, you know, could have very likely uh, been been fatal. Um, the, I mean, the car was thrown three yards. It it, it landed in a it, it you know, from the third house from from the impact. This the, the, um that that's just how badly we need a light or some type of um, safety measures here on Dartmouth Avenue and Twenty Second Street. When the council Donald and I have been pleading, I would hate for us to have a loss of life or lives, innocent bystanders, pedestrians, people standing right there on the bus stop. You know, this is a very situation, very, very serious situation that needs our uh, immediate attention on. Um, uh, thank you concerning that. Also, I have a question that I'm going to propose. I mean, I've been stopped by several employees saying that, that they have been told that we, the council, have denied them pay raises. And I'm not certain as to maybe I've forgotten or maybe it's something that I've missed. I know that every pay raise that, you know, a matter of fact, at one point, Council Alexander asked for um, the, a 5% that was um, that we were told by the mayor that you know, he, you know, he couldn't agree to that. So at what point that we denied giving our employees a raise, um, you know, can somebody enlighten me on that? Thank you. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Prusso. Um, Madam President. I was gonna say that would be a question, that would be a question from Mayor Gully because I truly couldn't answer that one. Go ahead, Mayor Gully. Um, I don't ever and so recall and so for five percent actually going and so before and so to council. Uh, but along and so those uh comments that uh Councillor Crusoe and stuff so made. When is it? When when has whatever I uh, proposed ever stopped the city council from doing whatever and stuff so they so choose? So I do take issue with a comment and stuff like that. Now we'll sit down and we'll take a look at whatever cost of living increase and stuff so that the city can afford and stuff so to do. But a, but but a a, a, uh, a a agreement or a disagreement. As a matter of fact, an agreement from the mayor definitely ain't gonna pass. But a disagreement and something never stop and stuff the council and stuff from doing whatever they so choose. Thank you. Uh, Madam thank, Chair, that, thank that, you. Wasn't a, uh, that wasn't a comment. That was more so a question. I asked a question. I said maybe it was something that I've overlooked or something that I have forgotten. Can you all enlighten me at any point that um that we de that we denied our employees a raise? I, I you know that that wasn't a, a comment. That you know that was a question, sir. Um, thanks again, Madam Chair. Madam thank Chair. You. Um, it is um, Councillor Three's turn 
to uh, <clears throat> District 3, Dartmouth Avenue again. I'm, I'm begging, I'm begging this council, this mayor and this police chief, please let us get a traffic light on Dartmouth Avenue and 22nd Street. I beg you, I, I beg this body, please. I know we need lights all over. I do, I know that. But Dartmouth Avenue and 22nd Street, once upon a time, had a light there. Light was taken down. I asked this body, there has been a child killed, a child who has been paralyzed. Do we want a family to have to bury a loved one because of what we could have prevented. And putting a traffic light at Dartmouth and 22nd, this administrative body and legislative body can prevent. And if it does happen, we will have done our part. I beg you, let us put a light there at Dartmouth and 22nd. Mr. James Ward, there on 22nd Street and Dartmouth Avenue. When I came to this body before and told you all that the young man to keep from hitting another person, the young man ran into Mr. James Ward Yard, Yard I'm sorry, and I didn't know that he had hit his front porch, but he did. Mr. Ward let me knew the day of this accident that um, he finally caught the person that hit his porch. He too states that there needs to be, that traffic light need to be placed back at Dartmouth Avenue and 22nd Street where he lives there on that corner. He also asked that the alleys behind his home that we can come and clean them and cut them. The trash is not placed on Dartmouth Avenue. The trash is placed in the alley so that the garbage truck can pick it up. But as I can see, unless it has been uh, picked up since yesterday, there are bags of trash that has been left out. Um, it looks like for two weeks. And there is overgrown grass in Dartmouth Alley. And I would request that all alleys there, um, we take a look at cleaning them out and cutting the grass there. Um, Facebook Live, Mayor Gully, do we have a status? No, ma'am, I do not. Thank you, I would keep that on the forefront um, for this body. And as Councillor Alexander stated, that the grass has grown up over on the north side. Um, the grass outside of the fence there on the playground at A Beautiful Beginning Child Development Center um, is up over some of the children's head. I see that they're cutting it. We found a snake on the playground that the children have named Mr. Pete. Snake. The children want to keep the snake. Um, we cannot keep Mr. Pete. I called and had Mr. Pete um, killed. We ask that uh, the city would please keep that, that grass at a minimum so that we won't have this problem anymore with Mr. Pete uh, crawling up on the playground uh, where the children are. Counselors, it's been a wonderful meeting. Thank you all for your time.
Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Item number 16. Ma Ma Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, be before we adjourn, uh, I've been uh, receiving a, a lot of calls uh, within the last couple of minutes of uh, from a lot of employees just thanking us, you know, for the premium that they have received a print uh, today. So uh, just want to thank the council for doing a great job and that great deed. Wonderful, awesome. wonderful. Uh, Ma Madam Chair. Uh, Councilor Marshall. We, we do have a citizen um, who wishes to address the council. Thank you. Tell that citizen to step to the podium, please. All right, thank you. Come on, ma'am. Has she stepped up to the podium? Yes. Um, Someone from IT is trying to get her straight. Okay, okay. Good morning. Good morning. You have, please state your name, your address, and you have three minutes. Good morning, uh, Councilman Marshall and the Dias. My name is Wanda Thomas, 2112 Dartmouth Avenue. Yes, ma'am. I'm coming up here to complain about a home or a structure on next door to me to the property I purchased. Yes, ma'am. I came up here in 2018. Uh, only three people were on this council. And I came up here to complain about the smooth property at 2124 Dartman Avenue. I also spoke to Mr. L. McElroy. He's on vacation now and he's been on vacation every time I have complained about this property. I've complained to Councilman King before Ms. Crusoe became the council person of District 7. And I saw that in the Western Star, all the weed notices, I didn't see a weed notice for that property. The side is kept clean on Mr. Smoot's side, but on my side, it has damaged my outhouse and everything else. That, that house is falling down. We are renovating, up. my granddaughter's renovating that house, but you have cars, snakes, weeds. When they took the trash, to the dump yard, two gopher rats jumped out. The possum look at the people that's repairing the house. I have cut trees and everything else down off of that property to get next to finish up. I just put a new $1,300 roof on the house. We did over $6,000 worth of electrical work. The house is going to be a beautiful house. But I was told that they pay their taxes. I pay taxes too. My domicile address is on Dartmouth Avenue. I am a resident and have a, you would not want to live in that type of environment. It's hazardous and you have invoked me to take further steps, whatever I need to do. I have been going through this for over five years, over four years. I can't even find the line. Three and four fences are put up there. That place is deplorable. That is a hazard. Veteran Bessemer is not going to make it with that type of structure still standing. And I just would like something be, to be done before we finish up because I will not be able to be even insured. And you've asked them, and I know they contacted them because I took to talk to the owners personally. 
And if you haven't done anything in four years, you're not going to do anything. It doesn't take that long to do anything. And I have to take further steps or whatever I need, venues or avenues I need to do to uh, help me on this issue because it has become a problem. It's a nuisance. And I shouldn't have to live this way. I'm a tax player. And I'm, I'm just not, not gonna continue to go through this. Mr. McElroy said he put a sign up there. The sign has uh, already turned another pastel color, from pink to yellow. It shouldn't be that like that. And whoever's saying putting the weeds out, you haven't gotten out your truck to look around the whole property. I have I have went to Foundry and just bought tons of rat poison and just actually thrown it over the fence to hold it off of two properties because they're running rapid. Ms. And possum carry and possum do carry and raccoons carry rabies. Yes, ma'am. Miss Thomas, you're your three minutes is up, and I would yeah, ask. I'll be back again ask, next week. I'll be no, ma'am, you don't. Week. You don't have to come back next week if you would just listen. I would ask okay. that um, Mayor Gilly, um, or to Rain would come down. Uh, to Rain would come down and speak with you, or if we can get Mr. Harmon, um, Mayor Gilly, to come and speak with Miss Thomas here. Um, in the council chambers, is that possible? Yes, it is. Mm, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am, Councilor Crusoe. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, um, hello, Miss Thomas, how are you? All right, thank yes. you for uh, mentioning Not a problem, she is absolutely correct um, concerning this property. She has been in contact with me numerous times um, complaining uh, about the property. I've gotten in contact um, with uh, Mr. Smoot um, concerning having this property demolished, you know, shortly after my election. And um, well, you know, he, he, he called, he talked to me about having it demolished and I explained to him what the process was and it would end up, um, you know, placing a, a lien on, on, on the property for the cost of the demolition. He in turn told me to hold off on, um, you know, uh, on the demolitions that he would, uh, would uh, speak with his uncle. And he, he told me that his uncle decided that they, you know, they were not going to demolish it, that you know, they were going to do uh, something else. I can't recall what it was um, that he said, uh, no, that they were going to have it demolished themselves or something to, to that effect. And um, up until today, um, nothing has been done. So, I mean, she is absolutely correct. I mean, I, you know, as far as I can't, you know, um, say um, concerning um, her, um, con you, um, what's her concerns to um, um, Councillor King, but she has voiced them to me. On, on 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 numerous occasions so i, I mean i stand behind her on uh, getting some resolution done here concerning this property thank you so much mayor gully or mr Harmon, can madam someone president. come down and speak with miss miss thomas yes madam president we most definitely will do that thank you so much miss thomas if you would just have a seat there in the council Wait a minute. chambers one more complaint you all going to have to do something about 22nd and Dartmouth Avenue. It's just like a racetrack. We have more accidents. You're not, and uh, your school buses cross 22nd. Yeah. The school buses speed, the police speed. I don't see the dog truck speed, everybody speed. The motorcycles and everything else. The 45, you'll miss it if you're not standing at the corner. And that's my other complaint. You're going to have to do something by 22nd and dark. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. You're um, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Gully. Um, counselors, this has been a wonderful meeting. Uh, this is my last meeting um, other than special meetings that I'll call this week and next week with you all on this term. Uh, I have enjoyed what I've learned. Uh, from you all and from different aspects of being the president. I pray that whomever becomes president of this body will continue the progress that we have um, we have done here in the city of Bessemer. Item number 17. Madam Chair, 
Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. I think it she's frozen. Is she frozen? Yes, sir. Are you adjourning? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I, mean, I guess we can go ahead with the motion because you know, yeah, we're, we're, we're frozen. I'm. I'm moved that we do adjourn. I second. I guess roll call, Ms. Taylor. Oh yeah, Councilor Marsham uh, made the motion. Councilor Crusoe second. Roll call. Councilor Alexander. Aye. Councilor Carrier. Aye. Councilor Crusoe. Aye. Councilor Marshall. Aye. Councilor Thickpen. Councilor Matthews. Aye. Councilor Donald. Aye. Six ayes, no nays, the motion carries. Thank you and have a great week. You too.